Hey everyone, welcome back to the channel. I am very excited to bring to you today's video how I made this marble machine. This is my seventh marble machine. The previous six I had to make without the use of a CNC because I didn't have one. So now that I have one and I'm getting a little bit better with it, I figured why not use my CNC to make a marble machine. If you're interested in making this for yourself, I have a file down below in the description. It will have all the SVG files of all the special pieces that I designed and machined on the CNC. It will also include any sort of dimensions and any special notes that you will need to make this. So pick that file up, follow along with this video, and you can make one of these yourself. So the first file here is absolutely critical. These are pilot holes done with a 16th inch bit. And what these are gonna do is ensure that when you drill these on the drill press, they are exactly the same distance from the center. They must be the same distance or your wheel will skip a marble or even worse, one of those marbles can get jammed up between the ramp and the wheel and stop the thing from turning. This file here is for the gear pulley. It's gonna pocket out a recess for the adapter. The adapter will just sit right in there friction fit and then you can use the shaft of your motor to connect to that pulley and now you have a wooden gear. So the CNC now is going to do the hard part, cutting out this large gear. I've done this before in the past, gluing down a paper template to my piece of wood and then taking it over to the bandsaw and cutting out each one of these teeth individually and then sanding them down so that all the teeth mesh exactly correctly. But with the use of the CNC, all that is super easy. So you can just see it cut these teeth here. It's gonna walk all the way around, do a full perimeter cut at full depth. And now you will have your Ferris wheel and your driver pulley. it's time to add a little bit of detail this wheel was looking a little bit plain so I wanted to add some of these cutouts here it's time to drill these holes unfortunately I do not have a tilting table on my drill press so I just have to get a little clever here I'm gonna set this angle finder on there if it doesn't say zero, I will set it to zero. Then I will just take a sacrificial board. Doesn't really matter what it is. I'll set it on there and then I will take other scrap pieces on this right side, set them under there and just move them back and forth. Make sure I get seven degrees. Seven degrees is the perfect angle. The marbles will wanna fall in there very easily. And as this wheel spins to the top, they're gonna wanna fall out. After a little adjustment, get it just right, seven degrees and lock it down. In order to get this wheel set just right, bring down your drill press, lock it in place. Make sure your Forstner bit brad point is on one of those pilot holes. Run a screw right down through the center of your wheel and you're ready to go. Doing a quick double check here, making sure my wheel spins freely. The plywood I'm using here is half an inch and the marbles I'm using are 7 16 So I don't have to drill all the way through my plywood, but pretty close. So set your depth right, get it all set up, and then lock your spindle in place. That way you can't go any deeper. Now as I'm drilling here, I can just spin this on that center point there with that nail. And I know that all my holes will be exactly the same distance from the center point, which is exactly what we want. For my example, I'm using 7 16 of an inch marbles and half inch plywood and I'm drilling with a 5 8 inch Forstner bit. So if I were to drill this hole all the way through, come out the back, we don't want that. So I can set mine to 7 16 of an inch depth and that will leave me just enough meat there on the back side to hold my marble in place. If you wanted to use a larger marble, I wanted to use 5 8 of an inch marbles, I would have to up my Forstner bit size to 3 quarters of an inch and then I would drill almost all the way through again 
about three eighths of an inch. Then I would use a Forstner bit size smaller than my marble. So in this example, half an inch. And then I would tap my sacrificial board that has my gear screwed down to it to the right so that I'm drilling at the bottom of the hole. If you were to picture this wheel upright, then I can just drill all the way through and that will give me enough relief on the backside so that the marble can poke through the backside just a little bit. And then the front of the gear, the marble will be sitting even or just below the surface. These boards here are going to be assembled together with some wood glue and some screws. And then this will be my upright for my wheels. I like having them on the same upright. That way if I ever need to move anything, this entire lifter will be one solid piece. Time to mount these wheels to the upright. The exit holes of the lower wheel need to be just a little bit higher than the entry holes of the upper wheel. That way your in-between slide can work with gravity and you can get your marbles from your lower wheel to your upper wheel. Quick spin here to make sure these mesh right. Everything looks great. Time to move on to the base. The base is very simple. It's just a small piece of plywood. And like I said, that will allow me to attach anything to this base. And then that way this whole lifter is one assembly. Okay, it's time for a test here. I'll put a marble in the bottom and I'll slowly spin this up. I want it to fall out at about, I'd say the halfway point between halfway and three quarters, and that way we know the marble will fall out when it gets to the top. Perfect. Here the ramps are being cut out. These are cut out of half inch plywood, and I'm just gonna sandwich these together. There's gonna be four of these for the lower ramp, and then probably three for the upper ramp. So I just have to sandwich these together. I'm just gonna use some CA glue with some activator. That will make short work of this ramp. It's not really structural. It doesn't have to be all that strong. Just to give this a more gradual slope, just gonna hit this with a sander real quick. Don't have to go crazy, but you can see that makes a pretty good difference there. This ramp is low by design. What I like to do is mount this to a separate board and then I can lift that board up just a little bit and that'll give it even more of a slope back to the wheel. And then those marbles will have no choice but to fall right in there. So setting up this second ramp here, the easiest way to do this is just to hold it up there and measure. Then you can cut a foot and put a base on that foot. And then you can just glue it and screw it to the top of that foot, slide it around, get it how you want it. But you can see right there, perfect alignment. So the CNC is cutting out this in-between slide. This is going to go from the exit holes of the lower wheel to the entry holes of the upper wheel. This has to be angled just right so that those marbles will want to slide in there on the left, follow that path around to the right, 
and enter your second wheel. So the easiest way I found to get this angle just right is glue a small block of wood to the bottom of it, drill a hole right down the center so you can put a screw there, and then you can pivot this up and down and get the angle exactly right, and now you've got the perfect angle. On something like this, once I get it set exactly right, I will take a pencil, I will mark two sides of it, pull it apart, put a little wood glue behind there, and then screw it back together, and now you know you're locked in place forever. On some of these features where CA glue is the only thing holding it together, I like to take a small block of wood, add some wood glue to the back and the top surface of that. That way I have two points of contact. What I'm cutting here is the marble guide out of acrylic for the large wheel. This is critical to hold your marbles in place. Just like I showed on the test, when it gets to about halfway up, maybe 60%, those marbles are going to want to fall out, so we just got to keep them in place. So with your guide, whether you made this out of acrylic or wood, you want to make sure that all these holes are covered. There's that adapter I was talking about. You can just press fit that. I'll probably end up taking a clamp here and just adding a little bit more force just to make sure that's in there all the way, but... Pretty simple process here. Clamp that down and now you've got yourself a wooden gear that you hook right up to that motor. Can use that to mesh with your teeth of your large wheel. An add-on for these motors is this bracket. Makes it real easy. Just run these four screws in and that'll hold your motor to your bracket. And then that way you have infinite adjustability. You can slide your motor in and out against your actual wheel and then you can get the fit exactly perfect. So I'll put a little bit of power to this and see this wheel spin. So I put the battery pack up to this and a switch. You can see that small pulley going and success. We've got this wheel spinning great. Everything looks good. So now the only thing left to do is screw down this bracket and watch the wheel turn. See it spins freely. Everything looks good. All the teeth are meshing together just right. Very smooth operations. So here are all my electronics laid out. I've got an adjustable knob for the controller to control the RPMs of my motor. Then you got your battery pack and your rocker switch. I wanted to make this marble machine stand out a little bit. So I had one of these extra 12 volt Milwaukee battery packs and I figured I would try to incorporate that into the front of this machine. So I created a couple of files one of them is for the bracket that's going to actually hold the adapter into the base of your marble machine. And then the other file is going to be the inside face of your marble machine. It's going to cut out a pocket and a couple of holes. The pocket's going to be for the battery, so you can plug it in from the front. And then the two holes will be for your control knob and your toggle switch. So I just took this adapter. I cut down far enough to get rid of those locking pieces on the side. So that way I can just slide my battery in and out from the front. So you just have to get your alignment right, put your bottom bracket down there. I just used some CA glue to hold it in place. And then when it dried, I ran a couple screws in through the bottom. And then just take your top bracket, get some screws that are long enough, screw them down, and you're ready to go. If you take a look at this here, I ended up putting these guides in here. These are just acrylic. That might be why they're kind of hard to see. I think you can pick them up. 
I've got my in-between slide over here, my couple of ramps here. I've got my foot here so that my ramp is, is perfect on there. Got my motor installed down there with my adapter and my gear pulley. So I am ready to go. Everything looks good. What I'm going to do is I'm gonna take this piece here, which is just a long slide, and I'm gonna end up mounting this somewhere in this area. And then at the end of the run here, I'm gonna have a bowl with three holes in the bottom of it, and that will be my distributor. So there's many different styles of distributor. You have this kind here, to where the marble will fall, and it will just flip this thing back and forth. And then your marbles will go left and right. There's that style. The style that I like to distribute the marbles is just basically a bowl that is turned on the lathe. And then it has three holes in there. Marbles will go in here, they'll swirl around, and then they will just find individual holes and pop out. And then on each hole I have a, another slide here and then that's where you will set your module whatever you want your modules to do those will end up going in there so i've got my start position down here my middle position my exit and now my distributor so if you guys notice i put a surround around this base over here and i actually made that base a little bit bigger wanted to be able to set a couple of different modules on here so I can have this thing shoot marbles all over the place. This surround is just four and a half inches tall. Just some beetle kill pine that I had laying around the shop. And this will help me get my marbles back to my ramp. So there's basically two different ways to get the marbles back to the starting position. You can either have slides that are all cut like this and all of these will end up angling back towards your ramp and that will get all your marbles back there. Or you can build a floor in here and that will tilt toward the middle and toward your ramp so that anything that happens on this surface, it will drive right into your ramp. That's the style I'm gonna end up going with with this one here. The easiest way to do these floors here is you put a couple of braces in here this one's about half an inch higher than that one, quarter inch higher than this one here in the middle. And then when you put your board on here, it will want to pitch in towards your starting point. You can add little feet like this right in the middle. That'll help hold both pieces together there so they come together real nice down the center. So I've got both my floors in here. These are just separate pieces that can come out individually. And then you don't want any of the marbles to go back there with the mechanics down here with the motor. So you can just put a couple of rails here. Those are all gonna vary based on your machine and how you do it. So now basically anywhere you drop these marbles, they're gonna wanna fall into the middle there. And that's exactly what you want. So now no matter where your modules are, they will all go right down to the start position, go back up to the top. So I've added these PVC pipes here temporarily. You can see there's notches cut out for them. So now any of the marbles that go down these slides will just fall straight down, exit out of these tubes and go back to the middle. I didn't want them flying all over the shop. I'm gonna dump some marbles in here, turn this thing on and keep my fingers crossed. 